Hello again. Uh, today's notebook can, comes from two questions asked on Stack Exchange. So thanks who, to whoever asked them. And the idea is, uh, well, the question is uh, simple enough. The, 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 the users wanted to calculate the discount margin of a bond. What's interesting is, uh, well, apart from how to, to do it, is that this is uh, a question that belongs to a, to, a, to a class of similar ones. So, problems in which uh, it's not uh, straightforward to, to do a calculation. So, in this case, for instance, to find the spread over LIBOR at which we want to discount a bond to get a, a given price. But it is uh, straightforward enough to do the inverse calculation. So, given the spread over LIBOR, calculate the price of a bond. The general idea in this case is to implement the straightforward calculation and then to use a, a root solver to find the, 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 the value of the variable that gives us our target price or target value. So what I'm doing here is to build the bond that we want to price. So it's a floater, it prices a, a semi-annual um, coupons paying the fixing of uh, your river six months uh, and we have a forecast curve that we use to, 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 to pay to for the fixings to forecast the fixings of the of the index uh, and uh, well this is just an example so I'm using a flat one but it could be anyone and I'm just making up the value of 20 basis points that I'm passing and as the discount curve, I'm going to use uh, the forecast curve plus uh, a spread, which I'm uh, encapsulating in this quote. Uh, it's set to zero at uh, to begin with. And uh, this is a quote, uh, so it, uh, it keeps track of changes in its values, and uh, it, it is observed by this curve and uh, by the bond if we uh, well, since we set the discount curve handle to the engine that we're using, this means that changing the value of the quota changes the price of the bond. So it, the bond is at par to begin with, and if we set the spread to 10 basis point, we get a new price that uh, well reflects the, the, the additional discount additional spread uh, over LIBOR. So as I mentioned, uh, what we do is uh, uh, now we encapsulate this this function, this, this uh, calculation in a function that takes uh, the uh, that takes uh, the spread as uh, as an input. So this function that we are defining inside here, I'll, I'll get later into why this is an inner function. But this function sets the value of the discount margin and returns the difference between the resulting price of the bond and the price that we wanted as target. So in Python, this is a function that defines and returns in other function. So we're passing the target price and we get a function that returns the difference between the price of the bond and the target price given the spread. So let's check that this works. So let's, uh, well, let's take this price, the one that we got using 10 basis points. So we're passing this to the generating function and we get a function small f that returns the difference between this the, the, the price given spread and this target price. So for instance, we have a positive difference when we are at zero because this the price is now 100 and is one point more than, than this one. If the spread is 20 basis point, we go on the opposite side and we might as well check what happens with 0, 0, 1 and that gives us well 
a, a negligible error because well, not surprisingly since this is the value for which uh, for which we had uh, taken this uh, this price so now we want to find the value of the discount margin that is uh, the spread that over LIBOR that causes the calculated price to equal a target price so for instance we want a target price of 99.6 we create this error function with, with this as a target price and we pass it to one of the, sol of the root solvers available in the library so in this case Brent this would work just as well with an external root, root solver for instance some one taken from, from SciPy so we're passing a number of parameters accuracy and initial guess and so on and we ask the solver to, 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 to give us the corresponding value so this is about four basis point and we can verify that this is the solution by setting this spread over LIBOR and printing the price of the bond this is well apart from floating road floating point error this is the 99.6 that we wanted as a as a, as a target price one thing to note though is uh, given the way we instantiated that the discount curve so this spread over live over an existing curve by default this one is considered a, a continuous uh, spread a continuously compounded spread so to get what uh, usually passes for for what what is usually defined as the discount, discount margin we you may want to, to convert it in the to the same compounding and uh, and uh, units of the the index fixing so the libraries in this case so we we can take the the result which is a the, the, the discount margin which is continuous and uh, convert it into an equivalent rate uh, with simple compounding the tenor of the of the of the index and so on this gives us instead of uh, well something very similar actually it's just it's, it's the, 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 the just the, in this case just the fifth significant, significant digit is changing as I mentioned this is one of a class of similar problems so given a calculation that uh, we can do rather in, in a rather, rather straightforward way we want to invert it uh, to get uh, a result which is not uh, as uh, straightforward for instance a, a problem in the same class might be to find the implied volatility of, uh, of an Asian option same same thing I create the instrument I create uh, an engine to price it uh, given uh, uh, and uh, I will pass the value of the volatility of the flat volatility I'm using as uh, as a quote in this case I create the engine in this case it's a it's a Monte Carlo one I'm keeping the number of samples down well it, it's this is probably too low for any real pricing but it's just to to to, to speed up the calculations for, for and to, to show them here and uh, well the technique is the same I write this generation generating function that takes the target price and creates and returns a function that takes the volatility sets it to the to the quote this will cause the value to be used in the function and in the, in the engine and then we return the difference between the value of the option the return value of the option based on this calculation and the target price again using a solver we can invert it and solve for any price so this is the volatility 20% gives us a price of 5% this 24% is the volatility that gives us a price of 6% okay I guess this is all for today as usual thanks you all for listening and uh, I'll see you next time bye